Hello and, of course, thank you for watching. This is for those who can and who want to do more. You have options to support the channel further. Look at the description below and pick the option that fits you best. But understand that by you watching from start to finish, pressing the like button, subscribing if you haven't done so, and commenting and interacting the video pushes my algorithm forward. So thank you nonetheless. Okay, so Mr. Daryl Brooks was in court. Now, do we really need an intro when it comes to this man? I don't think so. So, forget the intro, but I do have to tell you my legal spiel. If you are new here, I am Alistair Hanzekio, and this is just my point of view. Quick shout out to Stella. Thank you so much. You are the one who sent me an email and got my antenna to pay attention to this. Hi, Stella. Thank you a ton. Okay, let's go. And what is the plea agreement? Judge, counts one and counts two are going to be dismissed outright. Um, during the pendency of this case, we were unable to uh, locate the essential witnesses as to those two counts. Um, given that we can only proceed on count three, that is the count that he's going to be taking responsibility for. Uh, as to that felon in possession of a firearm, the state is going to make a recommendation of prison, leaving the amount up to the court. Um, defense counsel, is that your understanding of the plea agreement? It is, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Brooks, were you able to hear that? Uh, I, I can hear uh, the gist of it. It's, it's kind of it's kind of uh, low over here on my end. I have it turned up, so okay. I, I can hear it, but not uh, as good as I would like to. But okay, are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so what Mr. Kaur said was the plea agreement was that counts one and counts two are being dismissed outright because they the state has been unable to maintain contact and cooperation with the necessary witnesses. So those two counts are being dismissed outright. The plea agreement is that you will be entering a plea of guilty to count three, which is the charge of felon in possession of a firearm. And at sentencing, the state is going to recommend um, a term in the Wisconsin State Prison with the length and any details of that left up to the court with you and your lawyers free to argue for what you believe is appropriate. Is that your understanding of the plea agreement, Mr. Brooks? Uh, yes, sir. All right. The first thing I need to talk to you about, Mr. Brooks, is you're appearing today via Zoom from Dodge Correctional. As the defendant in a criminal case, you have the right to be physically present in the court when the judge accepts your plea and enter a judge, enters a judgment of conviction. You also have the right to waive or give up that right and agree to proceed via Zoom. So understanding, Mr. Brooks, that you do have the right to be physically present in the courtroom, are you willing to waive that right and agree to go forward today via Zoom? Uh, yes, I am. Mr. Brooks, has anybody in the world threatened you in order to get you to tell me that? Uh, no, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, have uh, you used any drugs or alcohol today? No. Um, and Mr. Brooks, has anybody promised you anything in order to get you to waive your right to be physically present in the courtroom? No, Your Honor. Have you had a chance to talk to Mr. Rakestraw and Mr. Hampton about this? Uh, I talked to uh, Attorney uh, Ray Rakestraw, not uh, Attorney Hampton. And was Mr. Rakestraw able to answer any questions you might have had about this? Yes, he was, Your Honor. All right. Um, Mr. Rakestraw, have you talked to Mr. Brooks about his right to be physically present in the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. And do you believe that his decision to waive that right is being made freely, voluntarily, and intelligently? It is, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Brooks, I am going to accept your decision. I believe that you do understand your right to be physically present in the courtroom and that you have waived that, agreed to waive that right and go forward today via Zoom. Mr. Brooks, I am going to ask you to do a couple of things. One, if you have a problem hearing anything that's going on in court today, you need to raise your hand, do something to get my attention so that we can address that. Two, if you were physically present in the courtroom today and you had a question for your lawyers, you would be able to just lean over and ask them. But because you're appearing today via Zoom, that's not a possibility. So if you have a question that you need to ask 
your lawyers. Again, you'll need to get my attention. Um, I can open up a breakout room. They'll log in on a device and they can answer that question. Um, any, any, are you able to do that for me, Mr. Brooks? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so a few things to pay attention here is his politeness. And um, from my extensive experience with narcissist, alleged narcissist, he had the opportunity to appear in person, but he chose not to. It's not because he doesn't want to appear in person. Understand, this is a show pony. He's going to take every opportunity possible to come in front of the camera and flare up. But he didn't take the opportunity here. That tells me this is a case he doesn't really care about. This is something he's really uninterested. This is something that actually bothers him, like in terms of inconveniencing him. Because mark my word, the trial when it involves Erica Patterson, he will be there in person. That's the one where he's going to absolutely want to be there in person. This one, he doesn't care. It's about his nephew that he tried to kill, allegedly, right? Do you think he cared? He doesn't give a crap. He never gives a crap. The nephew, <laughs> I'm blinking a lot, aren't I? I am blinking a lot. The reason why is because I'm processing and <laughs> I'm thinking hard in that little cabeza of mine, of course. Pay attention to his eyeballs. Blinking is an expression of pro processing power up here. He doesn't have that. He's very nonchalant. He's very casual. But that will change as we go along to the video. And that's how you can tell when his wheels are starting to turn. He's not groomed. He is very laissez-faire. He is kind of very whatever. And remember, the charges, it's just what? Um, guilty plea for having a gun? Okay. All right. Remember, he understands that he's in prison for the rest of his life. This does not interest him at all. Whether or not you're going to give him guilty, not guilty, he doesn't care. He has no interest in being bothered by appearing in person. Quite frankly, it is a sign of disrespect to who the nephew, because the nephew is not getting duty justice. Um, but again, I don't think the nephew cares also because he doesn't see him as family. It's a big ball of, I don't care. The only person who cares here is us. <laughs> oh, we <we're> such suckers. <laughs> um, Mr. Brooks, count three in the criminal complaint charges you with felon in possession of a firearm. That is a class G felony. The maximum penalty for that is 10 years in prison and a $25,000 fine. That 10 years can be broken down as five years of upfront prison time, followed by five years of extended supervision. Um, again, because it's a felony offense, you will lose your right to possess a firearm. That is a lifetime ban, and you will lose your right to vote until your civil rights are restored. Mr. Brooks, understanding those are the maximum penalties, what is your plea to the charge of possession of a firearm by a felon? It's charged in count three of this information, which allegedly occurred on or about July 25th of 2020 at an address in the 4,000 block of North 19th Street in the city and county of Milwaukee. Uh, plea guilty, Your Honor. So here is what the prosecutor went for. They said, look, you're going to rot in jail. We don't want to waste too much tax dollars going through an entire trial for this loser. Let's just pretend that we care about him and let's dangle a little win. Hey, Daryl, wouldn't it be nice if you never have to answer for this crime? Hey, look, all you gotta do is just plead guilty from having a gun and then everything else goes away. Isn't that great? And he took it. So this plea deal, he's playing guilty to having a gun while being a felon, which then means the actual act of pointing the, the firearm towards his nephew gets dismissed under that context of the plea. 
So for sure, the nephew doesn't get justice. But you know what? Let me tell you something. The nephew got justice already. By him being put away, the nephew is safer, considerably safer. So I don't think the nephew cares. Matter of fact, the nephew has written him off completely. I don't think he even thought about this. I don't think he knew about this until <laughs> us nosy people talked about it. Right? So this thing is a plea deal. In his mind, he believes he got a deal. But he's not smart enough to understand the behind the scenes. Honey, Daryl, you just saved the state a lot of money by playing guilty to this. And you saved them a lot of time. Don't think you won this. You actually lost this. Because you could have dragged this on for a few more 15 minutes of shame. Of shame. <laughs> of fame. Well, that works too. But you were not smart enough to understand that. Sucker. Mr. Brooks, your lawyers filed on your behalf a plea questionnaire and waiver of rights form. And it looks like you signed it electronically. Did you go over that form with one or both of your lawyers? I uh, went over it with uh, Attorney Rakestraw. And was Mr. Rakestraw able to explain everything on the form to you? Uh, yes. It was some things that I wasn't clear about, but uh, he, he explained it as, as best he could. Well, do you have questions now or anything that you feel like you don't understand about uh, the, the information that's on that form? Uh, maybe maybe one or two questions. Um, do you know what, uh, I, I guess, can you tell me what, you have questions about? Uh, I don't, it, it was maybe like a week and a half or so since we talked, so I can't remember exactly what it was. I just recall it was uh, maybe something minute or minor. I just wanted some clarification on. All right. Um, so, and did they print out a copy of this form for you? Uh, no, I have no copy of it. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll start, uh, the form tells me that you're 40 years old and you've completed 12 years of schooling. Is that correct? Uh, I've received a GED, yes, Your Honor. Okay, so it says that uh, you do have a high school diploma, GED or HSCD. Um, the form also says that you understand the English language and that you understand the charges to which you are pleading and that you are not currently receiving treatment for a mental disease or a mental illness or disorder and that you have not had any alcohol medication or drugs within the last 24 hours are all of those things correct mr brooks yes sir your honor and do you have any questions about uh those items no all right then the form goes on it's got a, a portion that's labeled constitutional rights and um that part of the form states that you understand by entering that you that you're giving up the following constitutional rights um you're giving up your right to trial you're giving up your right to remain silent and understand that your silence could not be used against you at trial that you're giving up your right to testify and present evidence at trial that you're giving up your right to use subpoenas to require witnesses to come to court and testify for you that you're giving up your right to a jury trial where all 12 jurors would have to agree that I am either guilty or not guilty, and that you're giving up your right to confront people who testify against me and cross-examine them, and that you're giving up your right to make the state prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, do you have any questions about those items on the plea questionnaire and waiver of rights forms? Uh, say it again, Your Honor. I'm sorry. The last Do you have part. Any questions about those constitutional rights that you are waiving or giving up uh, by as a result of entering your guilty plea? Uh, no, Your Honor. I'm sorry about that. That's no. Don't don't no, no, don't worry. As you heard, that piece of paper that the judge was describing pretty much told us what we all knew. He's not mentally ill. He's not mentally dis disabled, really. Um, he doesn't need he doesn't need to be a poster child for mental illness, uh, which puts in question again Don Woods and Mary on the wall. It puts in question all of his relatives who came behind him and rally around the whole mental illness spokesperson situation, because in that paperwork that he signed, he said he was fine, 
and not only is he fine, I'm not getting any treatment at all. And not only that, it co-signed again to the fact that he agrees that he's not a sovereign citizen. Which brings me back to the first video I made, I don't know if you remember, you might not remember, I don't, you might not remember. The very first video of Dara Brooks, the one that really where I met most of you all, um, I've talked about how um, he never really thought of the idea of being a sovereign citizen. That never crossed his mind. It just so happened that he came across the information. Someone was feeding him something. He took it in and put it on as a mantle. And he learned as it goes. And I called him smart for doing that because it was a tactic. It was a delay tactic, of course, but it was a it was a it was a way to prolong and exert influence on Erica Patterson at a time, which is frankly the number one person in his mind that he cannot unfocus from. And so I did call him smart then. Of course, uh, as we went through the trial, he's not so much of a bright guy, but I brought this up. To, I bring this up to say, I brought this up. I'm tired. English is hard when I'm tired. Please forgive me. I brought this up to say that prison, jail, confinement, rudimentary structures is the remedy for that well, for alleged narcissist. He can't take a piss without someone telling him to take a piss. He can't take a poop without someone saying, go in there and take a poop. They need that. Because left to their own devices, they would completely ruin the world. Look at how poised, composed, polite, and nice he is. Right? Remove all of the structure of the court. Remove the horrible crime, the massacre that he did. Doesn't it seem like a decent person? Remove all that. It's just an act. Because he is being controlled from morning till night. Don't be fooled. I'll point it out, I'll point it out as you go along, because I've seen the whole thing. Do not be fooled. It will rear its head again. If you got in this far into the video, that means you like the content so far, which is great. That makes me very happy. But I want you to press like. And if you haven't done so, subscribe. I don't know, maybe you'll like other stuff that I've made, or maybe you won't. Press work. <laughs>
You will respond, you can control it to a certain point, but you will have a response. How do I pretend like this is not bothering me? Oh my God, do you really have to say all that? Do you, does that really have to be said? Are you doing it the most again? You're doing it the most again. Oh, 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 this again. That's what's happening. He's trying to control the outward shell of what the turmoil, the, the turmoil, I'm covering my mouth. Oh, please, he's trying to control what's going on on the outside, but on the inside, honey, he won't get up and pummel someone. Strangulation? Really? <laughs> wow. And by the way, just as a quick important note, the prosecution said that they're not ruling out the possibility of bringing him to court again for all the other counts. So this plea deal is just so he can just move on. Let's just process you and move on. Let me tell you about behind the scenes situation. The prosecution is not going to, they're not going to pursue this. They're not going to pursue this any further. They just want to have a case closed, move forward. Because there's nothing, there's really nothing to prosecute about. And I wouldn't be surprised if the prosecution had a talk with the nephew. Because obviously, you know, <laughs> you know the justice is for him. And the nephew was like, oh my God, please leave me alone with this man. I wouldn't be surprised. It's just a simple phone call and a simple conversation. I wouldn't be surprised at all. So they, they're not removing that off the table, but behind the scene, when they spoke to Daryl and Daryl's lawyer, they all know he's not living anywhere. And he's like, look, just plead guilty to this so we can freaking move on also on our end, right? But in a true, true, true back end, look at me, keep going back, going back. Layers. <laughs> now the prosecution... They don't want to spend the time and the money on this man anymore. They are they are also closing loose ends, Daryl. You're not the only one. The problem is, and the difference is, is that we get to go to the store. You don't. Yeah, yeah. And have holidays and Christmas. You don't. All right. Now, his defense lawyer have to do something and say something. I mean, come on. You're being paid tax dollars. I want to see you work a little bit, sirs. So, <laughs> yeah, they have something to say. Let's listen to this. Yes, Your Honor, for my client, Daryl Brooks, I'm making a recommendation to the court of 218 days in the House of Correction, which would be a time-served disposition. Your Honor, Mr. Brooks is 40 years old, lifelong resident of Milwaukee. He has obtained his GED. He is the father of five children. Um, as the state said, Your Honor, you're very familiar with the going-ons about this case in particular. Um, Your Honor, the issue when it came to trial about this were about the first two counts, which were dismissed. Um, Mr. Brooks was cooperative with officers in regards to count three. He admitted to having a firearm um, to the police. Um, if it was just about the felon in possession, this probably would have been taken care of a long time ago. Obviously, we deny um, any... Uh, assertions that Mr. Brooks committed um, a shooting or shot at anyone or anything of that nature. So this was, and so he's here, he's accepted responsibility for the firearm, which he always was willing to do, Your Honor, um, and had made statements to police in regards to that firearm as well. Um, Your Honor, uh, we know Mr. Brooks is in prison for an extended amount of time. This was his first firearm case, at least to my knowledge. Um, he's never had any other cases with the firearm. Um, the firearm he uh, stated to me he got took from his 17 year old son but again never shot that firearm at anyone admitted to having it um i do not believe any extra prison time is necessary and is kind of moot at this point uh given granted given the sentence that he already has so i believe a time served disposition seeing as this is only he's pleading to only the possession of a firearm and it's this first time being charged with possession of a firearm i do believe the time served disposition would be appropriate your honor and that's why, Your Honor, I am making a recommendation of 218 days in the House of Correction, which would be a time served disposition. I'm asking for no fine. I'd ask that you waive any costs due to indigency and the fact that Mr. Brooks is going to be incarcerated uh, essentially for all of the foreseeable future. Um, and, Your Honor, he has 218 days of credit. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, is there anything you wanted to tell me today? Okay. The defense team is going to talk, they have to say something. Now, first of all, he never shot the gun. Are you out of your mind? Are you insane? Uh, defense lawyers, please have several seats. I know you're sitting down. How about you sit on the floor? How about that? How about that? Because let me tell you something. You could be a defense lawyer. 
where are your simple ethics? What do you mean? Of course you shot the gun. Of course you shot the gun. I mean, like, look, if I was a defense lawyer, I'd say to him, like, Daryl Brooks, have a seat. You shot it. You shot it. Look, we're getting a deal for the prosecution. You don't, you, if you don't want to have that in the sentence, I'm not putting it into my notes. I'm the lawyer. Shut the F up and turn around and, and look, 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 look at your feet. Just put your head down, look at your feet, <laughs> get your man out of the gutter. But do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? That would be, that would be unacceptable for me. It will be unacceptable for it will absolutely be unacceptable for me because my credibility is on the line. My credibility is on the line. Like how, like I would look like a fool in front of other lawyers. Like, oh really, Alistair? Oh look at you doing whatever Dara Books tells you to do because you want a tax dollars. Doesn't it can't you get cases on your own, Alistair? Oh, you can't win cases? Look at that, Alistair. Mm-hmm. He's the lawyer of the public defenders. Mm-hmm. He just says whatever Ethics! Ethics! You know why ethics is important? Because without character and integrity, you are pretty much a nobody. Simple as that. If you have no integrity, you're as good as nothing. Nothing! Please! I hope you're not offended by that because I'm not changing my mind, nor am I editing this. No! Integrity costs absolutely nothing. I'm like, really? He never shot the gun? Okay. We we all know he shot the gun. <sighs> Sometimes I get really baffled by intelligent grown-up men, not Daryl Brooks, the lawyers. And I'm sitting there like, wow. Wow. <laughs> no ethics. Anyway. Um <laughs> That's it. That's it. Let, now let's see what Daryl Brooks has to say. Now listen, guys. I'm going to preface this to you. Look at the show pony fanning out its feathers, panning out its peacock feathers, sh flicking his hair and shimming the, his boobs. Uh, now, listen, listen, showgirls, have a seat. You don't, you can't compete with this man. Everybody have a seat. Everybody have a seat. Get some wine. Get some water. You will all be replaced because Darebrook is in the building. Yeah, let's go. Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. Uh, first, I want to say it's, it's, it's been a long road to get to this point. Um, it seems like I've been coming before you now forever for this matter. Um, okay. I, so, uh, look, I'm going to dissect this like an anatomy class, okay? First thing, remember the entire time he is a Scrooge board and not interested. But now, look how picked up he is. I'm telling you, he's a show pony. He's like, oh, it's my time to shine. Hi, Your Honor. Hi. Mm hmm Hello. Yeah. Look, he's like perked up and awake. Mm-hmm. Licking his lips, getting his saliva and mouth moist to get the yapping going. Please. Oh, please, he yapped. Oh, yes, he yapped. We all know he yaps. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's my time to talk. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. You know, I just want to take responsibility for the mistake I made that day. Um... As my attorney said, it wasn't uh, a malicious mistake. It wasn't, um, you know, I didn't possess a weapon uh, for uh, any malicious intent. Uh, that was not my goal in that matter. I'm going to pause it again. So first of all, he goes, I want to take responsibility for it. And in the sec this next sentence, he's talking about how, oh, no, I didn't, I didn't really shoot him maliciously. How do you shoot someone with lollipops and bunnies? Do you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> I'm gonna get you! Pew, pew Like, how do you shoot someone with lollipops and bunnies? What? Really? You just... Okay. I mean, I don't know how you shoot someone unmaliciously. <laughs> I'm trying to control my demons, okay? Please, 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 please. Play. In that matter, uh, it was a stupid mistake. Uh, definitely something that I knew better than to be doing. And, uh, you know, I'm just ready to move forward now. Obviously, um, Your Honor, you're familiar with the current situation that I'm in. Um, and there you go. This is, again, a crumb and a nugget of his shame. Waukesha Parade was his absolute shame moment. Not because he was convicted, my my dears, I was going to say my loves. Ah, sure, why not? My loves. Not because he was convicted. 
It was a shame because Erica Batson spoke against him and this group of women pummeled him to the ground. That's why it's a shame. That's why it is his shame. And he thinks he thinks everybody's operating under the same mindset of Waukesha. No, Daryl, Waukesha has been trial for. This is a different case. These professionals are not walking in there with Waukesha in their mind. Maybe they are, but not in the forefront until you brought it up, Daryl. Subconscious much? But listen, listen, okay? There is a strategy about how a narcissist will go about his situation. They will first gather sympathy. What is he doing now? Gathering sympathy. Oh, what? A... <laughs> I've been very improperly lately on the phone. Yeah, work, please. I wish it was something else. <laughs> Let's continue. I'm just ready to uh, just move forward. Do you see? If Act like he's on the verge of tears. Honey, he's not going to cry. He's not capable of crying. Please. He's pretending that he's sad. Putting on the act that he's about to cry. Putting on the act that he's really remorseful. <laughs> Please. That's why he, I got all perked up when it was time to speak. It's my time to shine. It's my time to flare. I'm going to ask for sympathy because it wasn't fair. That rhymed. Completely unintentional. Hi, Sarah. Mm hmm And he said moving forward. Moving forward. So I wrote this word and I put it in square, the word forward. And I did that because when you say moving forward, and please take that your own personal lives, it's not single-minded. When someone moves forward, it's multi-minded. Really? That's three calls in a row. I might have to pause this and pick up the phone call because maybe it's really urgent. And not, if, if it's the next call, I'll pick it up. Sorry about that. <laughs> Distractions. Well, welcome to my life. Anyway, moving forward, when you move forward in certain situation, it's always in uh, consideration of somebody else. If you are not in the TIFF, when I say I move forward, Yes, you might be like, okay, I'm coming off in my life. I'm moving forward, but you are still part of the picture because from order for me to move forward, I either have to forgive you, I either have to let go of you. There's two points that intersect into a single decision. When he said moving forward, he has yet to acknowledge the other point. Does that make any sense? Right? So in his situation, he wants to move forward. The good way to do this is to apologize. Apologize. Then you're showing whoever is listening that you are moving forward. Because you can't say I take responsibility about a case that involves a firearm and someone potentially shot at and then say I never shot maliciously. That doesn't come that doesn't come together. There's not compute for people with a critical thinking brain and people who have modicum of intellect. It doesn't compute. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Poor choice of words. Well. Um I'm ready to uh tie up my loose ends, so to speak. Oh, there it is. Um there it is. Tie his loose ends. This is all about him. This whole case is nothing to do. I told you at the beginning, he's uninterested. He's just there just because he's there. Oh my God. Because if he was really interested, if he really wanted to make the show, he would have picked up these two feet, go through the processing situation and show up in court. All flared up and ready to address the public. No, 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 no. Please, he's still in his PJs. Is that is that prison PJs? I don't freaking care. But to tell you the truth, that's, he told you, I just want to tie my loose ends. But he's making it seem like he is very easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Like very like, oh, just tie my loose ends, right? He's sad about it, but he's so nonchalant about it that for him, it's like, I moved on. Like, it doesn't bother me. I am, I'm over it. 
but he doesn't realize that that doesn't make you look good. <laughs> Again, if you had ounces of intellect, this is what I w this is what I would have done. Okay, I'm not calling myself smart, but I'm not stupid either. I would have had, I would have put together notes of what I would discuss in a speech, and I would have that run through my lawyers and say, anything you want to say to that. That's what someone with something up here would have done. You don't just, this is the law, darling. Everything is going to be used against you. You don't just speak mindlessly. You think. Ironically, since this uh, situation has happened, it, it's ironically served to make me and my children's bond a lot stronger. Um, I guess for them seeing uh the with the mistake that I made had had caused me to um to have to deal with it's actually made them not even want to partake in anything uh firearm based or anything uh criminally based themselves just by seeing the strain that it's caused in my life and, and that's something that I'm proud of because I don't want my mistakes to rub off on them in any way. My son is now 20 years old now. Um, he's going into the military himself. He's uh, basically trying to get out of Milwaukee because he recognizes that uh, it's, it's, it's very dangerous and it's, it's a lot more known in, in, in Milwaukee right now. He wants to um, better himself. And a lot of that was seen from my mistakes and everything that I'm dealing with. So. Uh. All of that was a lie. Let me tell you why it was a lie. A lot of um, 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 that are mental breaks to pick the right words. And <sighs> let's dissect this. There are books. You have five kids. You have five children. Maybe mothers. Who cares? It doesn't really matter because it's about the kids, right? Five kids. You have yet to pay child support to a single one of them. A single one of them. Listen, life is hard. If you're going to go ahead and put your pee, pee and make a baby, you got to be responsible to take care of it. Do you understand me? So, I understand mistakes happen and oops happens. But you can't sit here and pretend to be like, oh my God, I'm so much uh, better and I move forward when you don't even do the basic fundamentals. And you know what? I don't know who's going to watch this. Maybe you could take it personal, but quite frankly, <laughs> I also don't care because I mean that. I really mean that. The second thing also, if you really care about your children, sir, Okay, okay, you wouldn't have done the crime. You wouldn't have done the crime. And the third thing, if a 2010 strangulation incident didn't make you think or didn't make your children think about being better, I don't know what will. In 1999, battery, really? I don't know what will. In 2000, cocaine, really? I don't know what will. In 2022, GSC, THC? Really? I don't know what will, sir. In 2012, possession of substances, 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 substances. Really? I don't know what will. Oh, wait, and you forgot Waksha Parade. I don't know what will. What makes you think, Daryl Brooks, and whoever, Daryl Brooks family, mm -hmm, I'm talking to you too. What makes you think, you know who I'm talking about, mm -hmm. what makes you think that this is the moment when the family is going to be like, we're moving forward, we're never going to touch firearm ever again? No. No. And this moves forward, this move forward, okay, enough with the forward word, Alistair. No. This speaks a lot also to, and I'll get to him again in a moment, to the importance of your decisions and how your decisions affects literally, literally everyone in your life. Listen to me very carefully, listen to me very carefully, listen to me very carefully. I've told you this in the last video I made last week. I don't move through my life anymore. I used to do it for Christopher. I don't do it any, as much. <laughs> I don't move through my life. Every decision I make, you best believe, I think about how does that affect my girl? Before she was even born, how does that affect my niece and nephews? Do you understand? 
Because I know if I fall tomorrow, if something happens to me tomorrow, no, 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 no. The ripple effect is huge. People need me to be alive, to be healthy, to be aware. I am important. Maybe not to you, but I'm important to the people who are in my network. And, I, and it's my responsibility to be responsible with my actions and my words. Because if something goes wrong, it affects everybody. So, yes, it's a lot of pressure, but that's the price you pay for birthing children. And that's the price you pay for being a person of influence. That's the price you pay when someone looks up to you. It's the responsibility. You think it's fun and games? When someone looks up to you, it's an honor. It's an honor. You don't disgrace that. It's an honor. It's a responsibility. It's a mental that you take on and let it on your kids. He just lied on his children. Really? Are you surprised? I'm not surprised. But let's keep on talking about the speech. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's been rough, it's been stressful. Uh, it's caused a lot of grief. You know, three years worth. And I'm, I'm finally ready to put this behind me and do the best that I can going forward in the future, Your Honor. That's that's all I want to say. I, I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I've tried my best to uh, carry myself before you and before your court uh, with, with respect to you and to the court. Um, I've tried my best to uh, keep my composure and, and do what's asked of me, and um, I'm, I'm ready to put this behind me and go forward. Thank you very much. Mm. Come to think of it, come to think of it, look at this face. No. I'm going to dissect this last part. Pay attention. Daryl Brooks knew what was reprimanded of him. His attitude in court. Obviously the crime. Erica Patterson. And his temper. He brought all of those points right here. He emphasized his attitude in court. Look how better it is. Look how better I am. Look how much work I've done. Look how much I've progressed. Look how much I've moved forward. He brought up the crime situation. I haven't done, any, I haven't done anything malicious. I was, it wasn't malicious. Yeah, I had the gun, but it wasn't malicious. I didn't shoot the gun, but it wasn't malicious. I just want to tie loose ends and move forward. This to me, it's it's not. It, this is look. It's not going to work. But this to me is the foundation of his appeal process. He's putting away crumbs. It's not going to work. And that's not how the law works. Okay, but he doesn't know that. He's a nikam poop. He's a nikam poop. <laughs> he thinks he knows. He thinks he knows best. No, no, no. To him. That's it in his mind. He believes that's what's going to work. And you know what? Also, he's being deceived. He's being deceived because the court is very polite and very nice. And they speak very nicely. Oh, oh no, don't worry, Mr. Brooks. Oh, no, don't worry. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm so glad you asked this question, Mr. Brooks. Oh, no. You have a question? Yeah, go ahead. What's the question? Yeah. What's the question? Okay, no problem. <laughs> Please. Please, you don't think that made him comfortable? No, it made him very comfortable to be able to be stupid. Let me explain to you something. This video that I just saw opened something in my mind is that he is not over Waukesha. And I thought that he resigned himself to his fate. Not at all. Not at all. Because as he came on when he made his speech and as he was explaining to us in a very specific events, you know, it wasn't malicious. Um, I want to move forward. I didn't do it maliciously. And look at my behavior, how much better it is. That's it. 
there's a plan behind that. And because nothing alleged narcissists do, nothing narcissists, narcissists do is without a cause or purpose. And the only thing I can think of, because he's in jail for the rest of his life, is in his mind he believes that if he changes his behavior, if he creates a pattern of, he can use that in his appeal, whatever the, whatever the case may be. It's not going to work, but he doesn't know that because in his mind, he truly believes he's the best thing ever. He believes that he has hope. Do you know what that does when you are locked in a dungeon with hope? It does the opposite of giving you strength. It eats away at you because every day is agonizing pain. Because it's not like you are locked in a dungeon in the middle of the forest where like, okay, you could scratch long enough and maybe you make a crack. This is a maximum security. Honey, you are not leaving. And the hope you think it might give you sanity, it's just going to eat away at you because every attempt you make is going to come back with failure. It's just going to erode your self-esteem. You, and this is someone with a self-esteem disorder. It, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if it jumps off the fridge. I gotcha, YouTube, gotcha. If he jumps off the fridge, I wouldn't be surprised if he finds a way to jump off the fridge. <laughs> gotcha, YouTube, gotcha. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because it's unsustainable. It's a mental torture that's not sustainable. That or he will go crazy. And this face, there's pent up anger. There's something pent up that he's saving it for. I'm telling you right now, the case with Erica Patterson will be his ultimate second flare. He's going to show up in court and he's going to show Pony all over. He's going to drag that out. Poor girl. Mm. Now, um, his rap sheet is insane. Insane. Strangulation? Straight from strangulation to battery. Court system? Really? Straight from strangulation? This is like in a matter of like one year later. Okay? Cocaine? Straight into THC. Really? Like two years later. And then 10 years later, possession again? And then Waukesha. I mean, like, who are we firing? Because let me tell you something. If this was a private business, we'd be sued to the ground. Sued to the ground. Someone needs to be fired over there. You go back and look, because if they're doing a job for someone like him, they're doing the same job for somebody else over there. Someone is not paying attention. Uh, heads needs to roll, allegedly, right? And then um, it's five kids. Five kids. They don't care about you, Daryl. Matter of fact, here's, what's, here's what you did to your kids, Daryl. Because the moment someone realizes that they are the progeny, they are your progeny, their life are going to be full of judgment. Full of judgment. Yeah, guilty by association. That's why it's important that when you move through life, you understand that your children and your kids and whoever is attached to you is also going to feel the consequences. What else do I have for my final? That's what I have for my final thought. No, there's going to. Be, I told you there's going to be more of him. I told you there was going to be last week. I told you. I knew that was coming up. I knew one case was coming up. I wasn't sure if it was Erica Patterson or this guy of, of of the gun. I knew. It's not over. I would say if I have to give my. Uh, eight most educated guests. We have a good five years left of their <laughs> five years. Yeah, not in high intense court cases. Just like sprinkle all around. In five years, there'll be nothing left to fight about, and that's when it's going to disappear. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, look. Let's go to my last talk. For those who are new here, <laughs> those who are new here. No, 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 listen, one, more, one last time. If you got this far, that means you like me enough. So press like. That's it. Let's go to my last talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. If this is your first time on Let's Talk, this is where I can uh, just relax and I tell you a little bit about myself and then um, try to get to you a little bit better. Like get to, oh, my God, English. Trying to get to know you a little bit better. English is hard. When I get tired, my tongue doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, and English is a tongue game. Hello, how are you today? How are... It's a tongue game in English. Please, 
<laughs> that tongue is exhausted for talking all day. Mm, what I need is not talk. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, first and foremost, uh, how are you doing? I hope you had a good weekend. I knew from the from last week's live, I knew some of you had not so great weekends. Uh, and I knew some of you went to see family and, you know, stuff like that. So I hope it was good. Uh, my weekend, I just worked. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. I work, 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 work. And, uh, and, you know, I'm a hands-on dad, right? So even though I have a very demanding job, jobs, I make time to be very hands-on. I am hands-on in my daughter's life. So uh, any spare time I've had is spending time with Olympia. And, you know, this baby girl of mine is so advanced for her age. Don't all parents say that? <laughs> My kid is going to be president. Yeah, we all say that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Except mine will. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Gosh, parents are so sappy. But listen, not to bore you too much. No, you be bored with baby talk. Okay, I saved the second part of baby talk for later on in the video. Let me tell you something that was very interesting. <laughs> this weekend no it was yesterday please uh -huh. yesterday my mother-in-law needed, needed her HVAC repair because you know it's hot so she calls the company <laughs> hello hi my name is Julia, that's my mother's love name. And she's so lovely. My gosh, she talks like that. Hello. And she, oh, by the way, she cooks for us. You know, she, she's been feeding us, feeding us for the past month. I haven't cooked in months because my mother-in-law feeds, feeds us. I'm not complaining. And it's gourmet food, by the way, with dessert. <laughs> it's great. For dinner, uh, for dinner yesterday was steak. Oh, honey, uh, lean steak. It was steak, dumplings, vegetables. And, uh, cause I like meat. I work out. <laughs> Get your man out of gutter. And, um, <laughs> come on, shepherd's pie. Mmm. And dessert. Pineapples? Uh, pineapple chunks. A lot. Hold on. And then it was on the grill. So it was like a little burn. <laughs> it was so good. Mmm. My mouth is worried. My teeth are cringing. I want to eat some more. And then, um, but wait, 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 wait. Okay. Cause I'm a big guy and I eat a lot, and I'm I'm you know I'm I'm from Africa, and uh, eating is part of our culture, really. So I said to my mother, I said to my mother in law, if you're gonna feed us, you gotta you gotta make for like three people. That whole thing of being like, here's a little piece for you, here's a little p no, give me the kick. You get your own kick. Like I'm that's how we are. That's how we raise over there. Like how I was raised. You food. Endless food. So she brought a bowl of pineapple, a bowl, a bowl. I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. All right, so back to her story. So she's like, hello, hi, it's Julia. Uh, my HVAC is not working and uh, I need someone to come fix it. So the company's like, okay, sure, no problem. We send someone over, okay? So, the, <laughs> so it's like, ding dong. Hello, I'm the person for your HVAC. Oh, hi, okay, well, come over here. You know what this MF did? He comes in with his phone in his hand. And, you know, my, like he puts his phone on top of my mother-in-law's phone. On top, on top, on top, on top, on top. Not to the side, not to the left, not to the right, not to the bottom, not to the floor, not to his pocket. On top of my mother-in-law's phone, which was resting on the kitchen counter. So that's very really odd, right? But listen, listen. My mother-in-law, like, took notice of that. She's like, all right, well, maybe, maybe he's weird. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's weird. All right. He goes to the spiel, gets, who cares what he, okay. That phone call happened again. Okay. Uh, it must be important. I'm going to hurry this, hurry this up. So he, he goes to the spiel. <sighs> now I'm distracted. Work. Oh, goes to the spiel. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to fast forward this. Then it's, it's time for him to leave. You know what he does? And he goes ahead and like pretends he's talking like you're my mother-in-law and I'm the I'm the thief. Yeah, blah blah blah. Age back, it's so amazing. Yeah, it's like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, this is the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then grabs the phone like that and put it in his pocket. <laughs> my mother-in-law saw that. She was stupefied. She was like, oh my god. But wait, wait. <laughs> my mom, she's so slick. She's shady. 
So this is what she did. So Ice is getting his stuff ready because she knew she took his phone. She goes, oh, I can't find my phone. Have you seen my phone? <laughs> she doesn't talk like that, but very close. <laughs> Not with that voice, but because she's such a sweet lady. Like, hi, hi. Oh, I can't find my phone. Have you seen my phone? No, don't be fooled by that voice. She's the beast. Um, so she's like, oh, hey, Google. Can you ring my phone? And the phone rings in his pocket. Honey, let me tell you something. The guy, I don't know if it was white or black. I don't know. But you know, how sometimes white people get very flushed when they get like whatever. Please, my spouse is white. They get flushed. <laughs> so, so, so I was like, I wonder if he got flushed. I don't know. I don't know. We didn't talk about the color of the person. But I was like, I was like, what? Oh my God. And the guy pulls out the phone out of his pocket and said, oh, <laughs> oh dear. I must have picked it up by mistake. Honey. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's like, first of all, a phone. Let me tell you something, uh, uh, phone thieves, idiots. This is not a third world. You, you're you not going to get much out of someone's phone. Do you want to know why? Every, most things are backed up on the cloud, number one. Number two, you have to crack open the phone situation. Number three, the password of the apps are very well secured. You cannot hack a phone like that. It's not that, it's not like the old days when, it's not like the old days. This is a different world and nobody is going to buy a used phone from you, um, idiots. For what? Like, here's an iPhone 6. Give me one $500. No, there's an iPhone 11 over there for 700 No. You know, like, th this is not, I'm not going to say the name of the countries, but uh, this there's no industry for stolen phone, especially not in the suburbs of where we live. What an idiot. So I said to my mother-in-law, like, did you call the company and complain? She's like, no. I said, ooh, you're a better woman than me. Although I do understand why she didn't do it. She was like, look, lesson learned. Get out of here. I don't want him to come back. He knows where I live. Just let, let it disappear. I'm just not going to use the company ever again. I said, okay, you're right. Not a, it's like a headache you don't want. A headache you don't want, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. that's a crazy story. Uh, back to Olympia, my daughter, and then I'm going to go. So, Right, so lately, because you know, my daughter's so advanced, my daughter's gonna be president of the United States and president of France, and then president of the European Commission, and then vice president of the United States, and then NATO commander in chief. Two terms. Go. She'll change the world though. No, poor girl. No, she's gonna take four. No, she's not gonna. Chris says she's, she's she's gonna end up being a paint a painter. I started laughing. Anyway, so what am I talking about? Right, so um, she is only one year old in a few months. She's one year old. And, um, you know, she she's getting her first words going. She is understanding of, like, when we dance and talk. You know, like, I love to dance. So I dance a lot around the house, even though lately I've been working a lot. So I haven't been done a lot of dancing. But uh, it's not unusual for the music to be popping and just me popping locking. I don't drink as I never drank a lot, but you know I'm I'm not altered state wise that much anymore, so you know I'm not as dancing anyway. Um, so lately, because she's more aware of the cartoons on TV, and you know I've watched Sailor Moon, and you can deny if you haven't or if you have. Sailor Moon was the was the bee's knees. And I watched it. And Sailor Moon was one of my favorite cartoons when I was a goober. And I put it on. I was like, you know what, Olympia? We're going to watch Sailor Moon together. And I put it on. And the opening scene, you know. Uh, 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 daylight. Bring it love by moonlight. And it was, it was, I was dancing. And she started dancing with me. A 1.2 year old. She was going like that on her hands. And she was laughing. And we were dancing together. Let me tell you something. I'm having the best time of my life with my baby. I think when this girl is going to be a teenager, like I, I, I already know this is going to be the happiest moment of my life. I, I already know this girl and I are going to be besties. But no, I'm the parent though. Look, I'm not, your fr I'm not her friend. I'm her parent. But you know, when, she, when she's 30 years old, it's going to be, and I'm going to be how old? I don't know, 70, 80, who cares? Oh. 
my heart is so full you don't understand and then um we have a lollipop together look 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 let me show you you see these so look i have like a lot <laughs> i have a lot it's not because i scuffled them down i have a lot it's because you know this office here is where where i work and sometimes i can't go upstairs i'm busy but right before bath time <laughs> Chris brings her down here and we have a lollipop together and we lay on the floor over there and we lollipop and I tell her about my day she doesn't she doesn't send a single word of it but I tell her about my day in French and you know we exchange lollipops full of germs and whatnot whatever it's my kid and then when it's finished um I give her a big hug and she goes for bath time and you get the water to all that stuff and then I just I just didn't throw this away because I was busy, but that's what we've been doing. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. I'm just the parent. I'm a parent. Last story, and then I go. There is this song. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. This music. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> I'm trying to turn my computer on. It went to sleep. It's about this. I don't know if, if I told if I told you this story, but you know I was goth, right? <laughs> You're like what? Yeah, I was goth in college for fresh sophomore year. In junior year, honey, I was spike collar, fishnet um, shirt. Although I wasn't too much of the emo kind because I was very laughter and whatnot, but I loved that look. And I was doing all the raves. Like, you know, there's a look, there's a look, there's a look, there's a look. And um, um, <laughs> you're like, what am I doing? I'm tapping the name of the song. <gasps> okay. Her name is... Baby Storm, that's the name of the singer, and the name of the song, The City is a Graveyard, oh my god, I've popped this music like 50,000 times so far, and I've just been, it brought me back to my rave days, she's, she's goth, and she's black, <laughs> like me, but you know, like, it brought me back to my rave days, and it was just so good, so good, I felt, <laughs> I felt, um, I felt 21 again. Please, I drank before I was 21, haven't you? Please. Drink and limit, 21 years old. Sure, give me a drink. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, bring me back to my rave days. I've been popping this and feeling young again in my head. You know, we all have a moment. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Look, 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 look. Uh, thank you, Stella. Thank you, everybody. And uh, bye.